I'm Francois, I'm co-founder at SimpliK. So SimpliK are free fundraising tools used by uh, non-profits. So to do a donation campaign, recruit volunteers, uh, sell tickets. So those are, it's a free fundraising suit. Um, today, I will talk about events and managing events during the crisis and uh, give tips to create effective donation campaigns. The knowledge that I will share comes from both research and internet, uh, etc. But also, uh, we spend the week speaking with a nonprofit who use SimpliK, asking them how they react, uh, and they have been really creative. So, thanks a lot to them. I will share a lot of the, their knowledge too. Um, so, first, events. So obviously, many events are canceled or postponed. So the first question and first basic question is what events will be affected? So first thing, if it's before May 15th, uh, from what we see, it's really, really likely that it will have to be either postponed and can, or canceled. Uh, if it's between May and June, it will really, really probably be affected. And what's important to realize is that even if it's during uh, the summer, fall, it, it may be impacted and you have to communicate about it. So even events that are in October and no, or November, you have today to adapt your strategy because no one really knows if it's really going to be better, a bit like what we see in China right now where it's recovering or people are also saying they might be a second outbreak. So in all cases, uh, your attendees, your participants are waiting for adapted communication and adapted uh, strategy from you. Uh, so what? Uh, so it's a great thing to adapt, but how? Uh, so the first idea is to postpone uh, the events coming in the next three months. Uh, you should postpone except if it's interfering with the future campaign or events, so if you have already an event, let's say in June and in September, uh, you will probably have to just cancel the one in June. And I have two, uh, I think, interesting tips if you want to maintain your event for now. So if your events are, let's say, in June, uh, you can try to stick to your plans. But uh, two tips, you, sh you can replace the uh, registration by a free registration or you can uh, stick to your plans and let them know today what are the options to be refunded so this way you can still get prepared for your events you can still uh, accumulate your list of attendees but uh, it's not an investment for your participant because like today it's tough to pay something for an event when you don't really know if that's going to happen so here is an example of an organization where they added a ticket to pre-register. And so it's free, but for the organization, it's great because if things go better, uh, it allows you to, to, to get the list of attendees. So it's a bit like Kim said, it's a plan if it's going well and a plan if it's not going well. So now we hope that you can maintain, you have the registration, but you may have to cancel a lot of events. And there are basically three options when you want to cancel. The first one is to convert the ticket to a donation. So let's say you have a, a, a gala for where the ticket is $200. You will suggest to convert to a $200 donation and you can uh, provide a, a, a tax receipt on the full value. Then it works also for some organization to propose a credit for a future event. So you tell your donors, thank you for your support. Uh, it will allow you to participate to a next event. And then of course you can uh, cancel and refund. Uh, I'm sure you're wondering which one is suited for you. So, well, usually non-profit, they, um, Usually, nonprofits they, they ask their donors between the three options. But a great thing to do is to ask uh, to ask your participants, so to call a few participants to know what they think, how they are feeling. Uh, I saw a message about my 
my mic. Uh, if you can, can, if you can say if someone of you can't hear me. I hope it's okay. Well, so you should really, uh, you should really call a few attendees to know how they feel about your event before choosing which options you recommend. So then, uh, interesting, stat, interesting stats from this week. Uh, we see that approximately one out of two donors will ask for a refund, uh, especially corporate donors, and one out of two will convert into a donation. So that, that obviously depends on the nonprofit, but it gives you an estimate. So now we talked about events, how to adapt, how to cancel. Uh, I'd like to share a few ideas for the future because I, as organization, your missions are all really important and you need to find ways to continue and to compensate on the budget you're not getting through events. Uh, the first idea and really, really important one is to contact all your major, major donors. So there are maybe 10, 20 people who uh, account for almost half of your philanthropy or half of your budget. And as Kim said, it's really, really important that you or some volunteers or someone in your team take some time to know how they feel and how they will react through the situation. Uh, your strategy will be really different with or without those donors. So you have to know before uh, uh, planning the rest of your activities. So then uh, you don't have, since you don't have any events, uh, it's a great opportunity to think long-term. So to look six months to breathe, <laughs> take the time to breathe and look six months, five years from now, uh, where do you want to be? Uh, really refocus on your mission, think about your communication strategy, think about your data, the tech you're using, and try to really prepare for the next few years because that's something that will allow you to, to, be, to go really faster when uh, things will go back to normal. I think it's also a great time to work with consultants uh, and companies because they will uh they will offer uh like they will probably offer discount to non-profits have more time to for non-profit so it's a great way to work with them in the long term uh, then i have a few ideas for you of events and fundraising events that you can do in a in a moment of um, when you can't have live events like uh, actual events uh, so the first one the first idea is a virtual dinner uh, so it's a gala where everyone cooks at home. Uh, so what's great is that you give your supporter a dress code. You give them maybe like a menu for the dinner. You tell them what to cook and then everyone share photos. They can listen to a speaker uh, through Zoom. They can even donate through an auction. And with the technology, with Zoom, for example, you can have some smaller rooms where, with like five or 10 people where people can network a bit, even if they are all at home. Uh, a really cool idea I heard this morning is to have uh, a chef giving a uh, cooking lesson so that everybody is preparing the same dinner with a Facebook Live of someone explaining what to do. Um, so that's a great idea. And what's really cool is that 100% of the donation will really go to your mission because you don't have any venue, you don't have uh, to take care of catering. So it's really a donation and so it's less budget. Then a great idea uh, is to empower maybe your board or your major donors. Uh, you can do a peer-to-peer campaigns so it means that you have your your donors and they will go in their own network for you uh, to raise the money that's key to your mission so about that uh, i would like to ask your suggestions i think the chat you you probably have other ideas 
uh, I saw, we saw companies offering yoga classes to Zoom and we thought it was a really interesting idea. So if you, if you, well, if you have questions, obviously you can use the chat and if you want to, to share ideas, it's also a great, a great time to do so. So another question I have is, uh, should I do a COVID-19 campaign right now? or in the following few weeks. Well, I think right now you should do a campaign if COVID-19 is impacting your beneficiaries directly. So uh, if you're a food bank, for example, and you don't have any volunteers because your volunteers are a bit older and they can't come any longer and you need to keep providing uh, people in difficulties, you should directly start a campaign. People want to help even if they worry about their budget too, you should definitely do a campaign. Then if we look a bit more in a few weeks, uh, I think you, your mission will still be very, very important. What's key when you will have campaigns in the next weeks and months is to uh, be transparent and fully explain why you are doing donation campaigns and what, where will the money go. So in the following times, people will still donate, but they will want to know exactly what the money is used for. So before uh, going further, uh, so the first part was really about uh, so events and fundraising strategies, given that you can't really have events in the next few months. Uh, now I know you will all do a lot of virtual uh, donation campaigns. And I'd like to share six tips in six minutes so that your donation campaigns are successful during the next months. Uh, the first one is really simple. Your donation forms should be embedded in your website. Uh, it limits the number of clicks. You can manage the aesthetic. The emotional contact with your donor is done because the person doesn't have to leave your website. It's good for the SEO of your site and it raises more awareness about your mission because once someone donated, they are still on your website and so they, they will spend more time on it. Uh, the second point, and it's probably the most important one, is really explain why you need a donation, explain why you are doing this donation campaign. Sometimes it's not that intuitive because you all, all also get the advice to, you know, not too much text, not too many pictures, uh, just keep it simple. But when it comes to explaining why, uh, don't go in the simplicity. <laughs> it's the only moment when you can be complex. Like really explain, okay, if I donate $50, uh, how many meals can you provide? How many people can you help? Explain, explain, explain. Uh, then it's more a marketing idea. Uh, once you have explained, always add a call to action. And so then people are donating. It's great to recommend a month, a month, so 20, 50, 75, 100. But keep in mind that you want your donors to choose the third or fourth a month. So if you know people donate usually $100, it's great to, to recommend 20, 50, 75, and 100. Like you don't want them to feel cheap when they donate. You want them to be really proud because they deserve to be proud. And then you should adapt the monthly buttons, uh, monthly amounts, because it's obviously different. And finally, always have large buttons so that it's responsive on smartphones. So five, I think I do less than one minute per advice. I hope I'm not going too fast and you still get all the value. Uh, five, once your uh, supporters are donating, um, keep it really simple. So once they are donating, it's a moment to just have them fill all the information. So no more content, no more pictures, uh, just a form. And so I, I saw a comment a bit fast. I can send the, we'll have a Q&A too. So yeah, once people are donating, uh, have the form really simple, no distraction. 
And last but not least, uh, the thank you message is really an opportunity for you. Uh, when people donate, 50% of them won't have a thank you message. And I think uh, it's really terrible because donating is a strong action. You really want to reward that action. You want to create a strong connection with them uh, to provide the, the why, to remind them what you will do with the donation, etc. So those were the six um, tips. And I think the really most important one is to explain why uh, you will um, explain why you are asking them for a donation, what you will do with the donation. So thanks a lot, guys. Um, so at Simplic, we're there to help you. You can ask any question if you need advice on your donation campaigns, uh, whether you do them with Simplic or without Simplic, we'd be happy to help. Uh, basically, it's a donation, a fundraising suite where we don't charge uh, any fee uh, for your campaigns. Also at SimpliK, uh, if you need volunteers during the uh, pandemic, so either remote or they can be in person too, we just uh, started an emergency platform so that you can find volunteers during the crisis. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, we'll be happy to answer questions and uh, I think uh, I will let uh, Julia go. One last thing I saw is simply a CRM. Uh, Simplic is not a CRM, but Julia is the CRM specialist. So uh, I will let her continue.